As you prepare to send your kids back to school, districts and leaders, they're focused on something you may not even think about. Yeah, their preparations could save your student's life. The focus on fentanyl. A report from the CDC shows median monthly overdose deaths in adolescents ages 10 to 19 increased 109% from July to December of 2019 compared to that same time period in 2021. Deaths involving illicitly manufactured fentanyl increased by 182%. You know, the unfortunate reality, our community has seen this tragedy before. Last year, Ethan Everly, a sophomore at Oak Park High School, died after taking a pill that was laced with fentanyl. Accept how this feels like, because this is hopeless. This is what hopeless feels like, but our family's not hopeless, right? So none of this is hopeless, um, and we don't want to let his death you know, be in vain. Unfortunately, Ethan is not the only teen who has died in our community from a fentanyl overdose. So schools across our area, including Kearney High School and Kansas City, Kansas Public Schools, they have Narcan on hand. It can stop an overdose and save a life. But keep in mind, the solutions can't stop there. KSHP 41 News reporter Leslie Delisbor takes us to a roundtable sharing many voices focused on fentanyl. This isn't about punishment. This is literally about how do we keep kids safe? How do we keep families safe? How do we keep parents safe? Taking a seat at the table, congressional and school leaders are having a tough conversation about fentanyl. How do we get to people earlier? How do we make sure that people understand what um, what the dangers are and how we can help each other? Too many of us have lost somebody. Uh, too many of us have had to uh, figure out how to help our friends or loved ones who are dealing with this. Including parents like Libby Davis, who lost her son Cooper in August of 2021 to the drug. We have pretty much been on a, miss, a mission since day one um, in an effort to make sure that Cooper's death is not in vain and that something good comes out of our loss. Working hard to raise awareness, Libby says she's happy to see leaders trying to keep kids safe, but the conversations about the dangers of fentanyl start at home. I want it to be dinner conversations a lot so that they, those teenagers never forget when they go out and, you know, don't get lost in the heat of the moment and just remember um, the lethality of what's out there. Congresswoman Sharice Davis agrees, adding that fentanyl is impacting youth in more ways than one. Young people who think that they're uh, who who think that they're taking something that is not fentanyl, and then they end up um, and they end up dying. But as the school year quickly approaches, leaders and Libby Davis say they are happy to see educators working to okay. keep kids safe. For these teenagers, we have to keep it top of mind. You know, their brains are still developing. We're trying to save lives here in Johnson County. Leslie Delisport, KSHB 41 News. Law enforcement officials, school resource officers, and local superintendents also attended today's roundtable discussion. Leslie talked with the superintendent of the DeSoto School District about the need to act on this challenge that's growing in our communities. There's a need to have continued conversations around this matter um, and to work collectively uh, to improve our messaging and awareness and safety for all of our kids and their families. You can always reach out to your schools if you have concerns or questions related to this matter, and we can connect you to other resources. Well, one resource, test strips. In May, Governor Laura Kelly signed a bill decriminalizing fentanyl test strips, and that law took effect one month ago, July 1. The strips can be used to detect fentanyl and other substances. Before this law, the test strips were considered drug paraphernalia. The law also increases criminal penalties for making or selling fentanyl.